All right. Now, on this particular project, probably not yours, but on mine, I got all these lichens. And they're really, really stuck on here. Now, I did a couple little things to see what, you know, the best method of removal would be. And basically, I just kind of use that degreaser thing again. And I get a brush, wipe her on, give her a little scrub. But even if your uh, if your roof is kind of got cooties and all that kind of stuff on there, and you want to clean it up, this is kind of a good method. Okay, so the whole idea on this roof is we're just going to clear it. So we still have to prep for clear. So and what happens is this uh, all this dirt and stuff is still stained into the paint. So then what we're gonna do, just use a scoff cloth, same thing, a little bit of degreaser, and that cleans it up nice. Now the nice thing about it, if you're really good and thorough, you're prepping while you're cleaning, because your scotch brake is doing your sanding for you. You got lots of this. There. Just like that. It's prepped. Ready for clear. Alright, as you can see, I got lots of work to do. Today we're, uh, we're prepping everything up for paint. Now, I've got two coats of high build on here. And first thing I want to do is stroke it with a little 220. Now, the I've got some guide coat on here. If we were to go straight to 320, it'd take you a long time to do it. If you get everything nice and straight with your 220, another uh, guide coat, and then hit it with 320, the time is cut way down and you'll actually get straighter uh, body work. So if things are a little crooked in your world, you can use a little 220 and it'll, it'll help straighten that out a little bit more. And you go just until the guide coat disappears and then you stop, no more. So I'll continue with all this boring stuff and when we get her all prepped up, then we'll uh, show you what I do to paint this.
on these curved edges, it's nice to have one of these little flexible pads. And you can just kind of bend, get right around that corner. They're awesome. We've got some pinholes here. I said I was going to show you guys how to, what I do to fill them. I don't like the two part stuff because it's a little bit uh, too hard to sand. So I just use a glazing putty. And then what I'll do is just sand a 320. And it'll be good to go. Paint right over it. And you're wondering why, why are we doing such a good job on the body work? Well, I don't want this to look like somebody's first job. I really want this to look like it just came out of the factory and things were pretty straight back in 1956, so we'll make it look good. Time to paint. Now I got everything kind of all masked up here. I love this plastic stuff, but when it says paint on this side, Make sure that your plastic is on the side that you're painting or else your, your uh, paint will just come off. Um, now on these, whenever you're doing an old patina paint job, the hardest thing is to match up the paint because this truck has been around forever. Uh, the interior is a different color than the exterior. and So I'm going to show you what I do. I'm just going to... Uh, uh, move over to my uh, table where I'm mixing up some paint and I'll show you what I do. Alright, I'm at my mixing table here. Now, what I normally do is I'll buy a, a yellow that is lighter than what I need and one that's darker than what I need. That way I can kind of custom mix what I need at that particular time. Now this one here, this is, this is something that I've never done before, but I'm just going to throw that down there. This is the epoxy primer that I use, and they were able to tint it a red oxide. So now what I'm going to do with that, I'm going to add a little bit of black on there, and it's going to be pretty close to what the rust color is that's coming through on my, on my, uh, on the cab. I'll just show you that. You can see the rust right there. So when I sand through, it'll kind of be the same color. It's kind of a dark brown. So I'm just going to add a little black to that, darken it all up, and I'm good to go. So that's what I do. So it takes a little while of screwing around to kind of get what you want, but it's worth it. been a night. I let this dry overnight. Now you're just going to get a little bit over spray here and there and since I just want to blend the yellow in I'm going to use the opportunity to before I paint get rid of some of that little bit of over spray that's kicking around. That way it doesn't show up after we clear it. And the nice thing about letting this dry overnight you just give it a real light sand. I'm just using 400 right here. Nice light sand, smooths off, gets off all the little nubbies and dust particles. Just gives you that extra edge to get a nicer job. Okay, I'll finish up. We'll get on with the painting. What do you say on those uh, um, bottom ones down to the bottom? What's bottom one? That's the seal part, the scratch parts.
We're above the window right now, the front window. I'm going to just show you what I do to make these look like little rock chips up here. I just take a paintbrush with a little bit of lacquer thinner and then you can just, just hit it on the corner, take a little of the paint off and then you just go back over 400 grit and just give it a sand to blend it all out a little bit. That's how you do a rock chip. Now I'm using a base coat clear and so this this really hasn't taken that long to dry. Maybe an hour. Get this all done and we'll try and get them a little different sizes. As you can see, I think that that panel right there needs a scratch. So I'm going to show you how to put a scratch in. Works pretty good. So I've just got a real thin paintbrush here. So if I want to put a scratch, I just I just basically just have to just put in a little scratch like that. A little bit of lacquer thinner, same as we did with the uh, uh, with the rock chips. Just put a little spot every once in a while. You know she's pretty beat up, so if we put a scratch in there, then your eye kind of flows along, and you don't notice it as much. Okay, we're just finishing up here now. Now, on any paint, if you, let's say I just, I just sanded this little area right here. When you clear it, this is gonna be, end up being a little different color than this. So what you wanna do is you wanna even everything out. So what you can do is, I go really light, little circles like that, and you can finish off with a scuff cloth. That way you're just gonna even the paint out a little bit more. So, final tip before we go to clear. Looking good. Done deal. The clear is all done and we've got the cab on the frame. So just to give you a different perspective of how it looks, give you a little look at the uh, cab corner in the back and it looks pretty darn good. So now it's on to fenders and hoods and everything else. So stay tuned. I'm sure it's going to be fun.